Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So Chase this week just announced that the sign up bonus for their Chase Sapphire Preferred Car and Sapphire Reserve Car will increase from 60,000 to 75,000. Now, there's no telling that when this deal is going to go away. So I know a lot of people want to take advantage of it, probably including you. That's why you're watching this video, right? So let's go into the detail and see how you can take advantage of that. Remember, if you haven't subscribed, my name is Johnny. I'm here to elevate your travel by talking about points, loyalty program, frequent flyer program, and also just simple hacks. So please subscribe and like the video if you find this helpful. Thank you in advance. Okay, so there are three things that I want to go over today. Eligibility, valuation, and usage. So let's get right into it right here. Okay, so in terms of eligibility, we want to see if who qualifies, right? If you qualify or not. So let's just go over this right now. So you, everyone can get 75,000 bonus point after you spend $4,000 on purchases in the first three months from account opening. So there's your spend requirement. However, you cannot get the bonus points if you currently hold any of these two cards. So if you currently have a Chase Sapphire Preferred Car or Chase Sapphire Reserve Car, you're not eligible for this sign of bonus. Also, if you have had this car before and receive a sign up bonus within the past 48 months, you're also not eligible. So how can you be sure, right? How do you find out? So first thing first, you can call Chase and ask them, Hey Chase, when was the last time I received my sign up bonus for the Chase Sapphire Prefer or the Sapphire Reserve card? Uh, most likely they'll tell you, they'll look it up. It'll, it might take a little bit of time. In the case that they don't know when you receive your last sign up bonus, what you can do is go back and think when you receive your card and add about three to four months, because it says over here, three months from count opening. So assuming it also took you three months to spend the $4,000 before, then you add another month just to be safe, give yourself a safe window, then that should be the time that you can count 48 months. If you're outside of that, that's great. You're eligible for it. Now, if you currently have any of these two cards, but you're outside of the 48 month, what you can do is uh, either cancel the card, which I don't recommend, or you can product change down to a Chase Freedom Unlimited or a Freedom Flex. Those are no annual fee. So uh, that should be a good way to uh, product change it. And then wait about seven business days just to be safe and then reapply for uh, this card for this uh, new bonus. All right, number two, valuation. I feel like most people are gonna focus on this part because I think everyone wants to know how much value they're getting back from getting the 75,000 points. Now there's three ways to evaluate this. Number one is getting statement credit, but it might not be the best way because Chase only gives you one cent per point if you're getting statement credit, which means 75,000 points, you're actually just getting 70, uh, sorry, $750 back. That, that might seem a lot and it, it is, but there are better use case if you just keep reading right here. So over here it says that's over 900 towards travel when redeemed through Chase Travel. And if you're having the reserve card, you will get uh, $1,125 towards Chase Travel uh, when you're going through the travel portal through Chase. And then that's because if you are spending your points on their uh, travel portal through their ultimate reward program, for the Sapphire Prefer, you're actually getting an extra 25% bonus. And that's why it's not $750, it's actually $900. And over here with the reserve card, you're getting a 50% bonus. So you're getting that extra boost from uh, the $750. So that's why over here you're getting $1,125. Now that might be good too. That's already better than statement credit if you can use it through their travel portal. But if you actually transfer to their transfer uh, partners, their travel partners, then you can actually get over two cents per point and sometimes even more. And if you are a viewer of this channel, you probably already know 
that we've gone through multiple use cases where we transfer to, let's say, uh, Air Canada's Aeroplan uh, program, or um, which what's the other one? Uh, Flying Blue uh, for uh, Air France. Um, you can get a outsized value from just these points. So I would say the best usage personally is to transfer to a travel partner and redeem that way. If we have time, we can go over some examples at the very end. So maybe you'll stick to the end and uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. All right, the last one is usage. And this one is tricky because it's really hard to tell how one person might use their, the different cards because everyone's in a different situation. But I think the general rule of thumb is if you are a beginner in the points game, you should probably go with the Sapphire Preferred card just because it's got a very low annual fee of $95. Compared to the Reserve card, it's got a high annual fee of $550. Then of course, they have different benefits. But that way, if you're a beginner, at least you don't have to invest a lot of money on the annual fee, but at the same time, still get the same amount of bonus points, 75,000 bonus point. And while you're doing that, you can sort of fill it out and see if these kind of travel credit cards is right for you. Now, if you're a seasoned player, you're a veteran points player, then you probably know how to maximize the value of the Chase Sapphire Reserve car. Then I think the $550 annual fee could be justified uh, with your usage and knowledge. Okay, so why are the difference between the two cards? So let's take a look and compare the two so you can make even better decision on you know which one to get. Um, so let's look over here. With the Chase Sapphire Prefer, you're going to get a $50 Chase travel credit, but that's only through their travel portal. Beware of that. Uh, versus if it's the reserve card, you get right off the bat $300 in travel credit. And that's you can spend like anywhere, any travel category. So think uh, hotels, airfares, um, even if you do a travel agent like Expedia those all count. So keep in mind, it's easier to use the 300. But again, also you have to keep in mind that the reserve car has a, a lot higher annual fee. So the value on travel redemption, this is what I talked about before, where you can actually uh, use the point on their travel portal. Uh, for the preferred car, you get 25% more. For the reserve car, you get 50% more. The partner benefit uh, this part is tricky because you might not get the full value out of it. So think uh, your, uh, let's see, we can just go over here. So for the reserve card, they, there's more value in this one or uh, more partner. So you can do, uh, there's the uh, Lyft Pink membership, DoorDash, uh, Dash Pass subscription. Uh, you get a Instacart membership, You the, but the biggest one, uh, that everyone uses is the priority pass. So with the priority pass, you can actually uh, use that at the airport lounges. And that's very, very, very useful. Uh, but again, you have to pay the higher annual fee to get this um, benefit. So you can kind of think if you travel, I would say, I don't know, internationally a lot, uh, then this might be worth it. Domestically in the US, um, yeah, I don't like the priority pass lounges domestically because they're, they're always crowded and you really don't have much, um, offering in, in those lounges, but that's just my opinion, obviously. Um, okay. So, uh, moving, moving further. Uh, so through the travel portal, you also earn points. So if you actually book through their travel portal, you can actually earn, uh, five times back if it's hotel and car rental. With the preferred car, with the reserve car, you get 10x back. So that's quite a lot, but only through their travel portal. So beware of that. On all other purchase, all, all other travel purchases, you get 2x back with the preferred and 3x back uh, with the reserve. So think you don't go through their travel portal and you just buy direct from, let's say, Hilton, Marriott, or uh, you buy from uh, United uh, American Airlines, then you get. 3x back uh, the reserve and 2x back with the prefer and then here, here here's the here's the funny thing uh <laughs> and this is one of the reasons why i actually don't like the reserve card that much on dining on dining they're the same but 
again, you're only paying ninety five dollars for the preferred card and five hundred fifty dollars uh, for the reserve card, but you kind of get the same benefit here uh, for uh, dining purchases. So if you go out to eat at restaurants or you get takeouts, you get DoorDash, Uber Eats, uh, these all count, and both of them uh, gets three x back. I feel like if uh, the reserve card can bump it up to four, that will be a, like a game changer, at least in my eye. Um, and again, uh, the reserve card gets airport lounge access, and they also get global entry and TSA pre-check credit, which is quite useful. Again, again so you really have to kind of see, are you actually going to travel a lot? If you do travel a lot, I would say, yeah, the reserve card might be a better fit, but if you are not sure, if you're just starting, then you should just go with the cheaper annual fee, $95. So I promised to show you guys how to get outsized value from just these 75,000 points. So let's do it right now. So what you want to do first is go to uh, Air Canada website, log in, and then you can search for uh, a war flight. So you're going to do one way and then click book with points on Aeroplan. Chicago to Istanbul, March 13th of 2025, and then hit find. What you'll see is over here, we have Chicago to Istanbul on Turkish Airlines and only cost 70,000 points. 70,000 points, you still have 5,000 points to spare, okay? There is a uh, service charge of $78 Canadian dollars uh, that roughly translate to $55 uh, US dollars. So, but exactly how much does that, does that worth, right? So let's go to Google Flight. I already searched this up for you guys. So it actually costs $3,652. So this is the value that you're getting for 70,000 points. Remember, remember all the way up here on their website, they said you can use over $900 toward travel if you use it on their travel portal and remember me telling you that that's not a good idea that you can actually uh transfer your points to travel partners and get outsized value well there you go transfer your points to air canada using aeroplan and you get outsized value 3652 compare to the 900 even if you compare to 1100 dollars still a lot more that's still 3x what they're giving you right there so if you find this helpful remember to give us a like and subscribe to the channel okay but 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 i'm going to show you one more if you're not into flying like let's say you don't want to go to istanbul then maybe you want to use it for hotel then you can choose to transfer your points to hyatt uh, because Hyatt is one of their uh, transfer partner as well. Um, so if you look at over here, Park Hyatt Maldives, beautiful, beautiful resort, right? It costs uh, 35,000 points for one night. Okay, so since you have 75,000 points, uh, you can use the points and stay here for two nights. So that would cost you 70,000 points. And let's see, how much does it cost? Per night let's see so let me toggle to not use points and over here beach villa even if you use the member rate which you should always use the member rate um it's one thousand and forty five dollars per night and staying two nights which means your seventy thousand points actually translate into two thousand dollars again that's more than if you use it for statement credit, which you will only get uh, $750 back and still a lot more than you using the points in their travel portal uh, because in their travel portal, uh, your points only worth $900 or $1,100. But by transferring to travel partners, you actually 2x over here by transferring to uh, Hyatt. So, you should. That's just my opinion, obviously, but you should always try to transfer to travel partner to get outsized value. All right, what do you guys think? How are you guys going to use the 75,000 bonus point? Leave a comment 
down below because I want to know. Maybe I'll learn something from you, right? I always learn. You can always support us by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. That will work too. Also, if you want to see more usage for your chase points, you can click on these two videos here and learn more. See you guys next time. Bye.